Hey friends, it's about 12.30 a.m. You know, last night I uh, took melatonin for the first time in a lot of years and I really slept well and I did it tonight but did not ha have the same effect when the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you. He's going to wake you up. So he started speaking to me about an hour ago and... Um, thought if I don't release this I'm not going to get back to sleep so um, a friend of mine posted on Facebook yesterday Rachel um, and she made a statement that just kind of started a revelation to me um, um, she was speaking about how little we walk in our authority in the kingdom um, and taking the keys of the kingdom and exercising that authority in our lives and so it uh, just quickened a revelation in me started a revelation um, and obviously the Holy Spirit woke me up with expanding that revelation um, in regards to the keys of the kingdom and walking in that revelation um, so I'm going to title this loose thyself and that comes from Isaiah chapter 52 and so I'll just uh, start there Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1 says awake awake and this is kind of a big deal it's speaking of a conscience a consciousness awakening it's speaking of awakening to righteousness Paul speaks of this he says awake to righteousness and sin not for some have not the knowledge of God I speak to your shame I speak to your nakedness your nakedness in Christ you have not you have not become clothed in him yet he's saying that's what he's saying I'm I speak to your shame I'm speaking to your nakedness in Christ that you have not been fully clothed the son of righteousness has not fully arisen upon your heart and that's what happens as Christ arises upon our hearts we awake to a Christ consciousness so that we can fully walk just as he walked that we would live in a consciousness of walking in the power and dominion of Christ in the kingdom Isaiah 52 1 awake awake put on strength O Zion put on thy beautiful garments O Jerusalem, the holy city. This strength, you know, it speaks of in the word, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And this putting on strength is putting on the garment of praise. Put on strength, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. This is putting on the garments of salvation of Yeshua. Isaiah chapter 61 speaks of this as well, uh, verse 10 and 11, it says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation of Yeshua. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, for as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so shall the Lord God cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. Be enclosed in righteousness of Christ. Be enclosed in Yeshua through our praises. 
Awake, awake, put on strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For there shall no more come into thee, speaking about the heavenly Jerusalem, the heavenly Zion. For there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and the unclean, those of an uncircumcised heart and that have unclean lips, which Isaiah spoke of that in Isaiah chapter 6. Woe unto me, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. As we awaken to righteousness, as Christ arises upon our heart, we must circumcise, allow our heart to be circumcised, and that our lips come into agreement with his truth. For there shall no more come into the uh, the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself off from the dust this dust of the old man. Put off the old man. Put on the new. Shake thyself off from the dust. Arise and sit down. Sit down in the finished work of Christ. Arise, ascend into the heavenlies, seated far above all principality, power, dominion, and might, and every name that is named. Seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Shake thyself off from the dust. Arise and sit down and loose thyself. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem, and loose thyself from the bands about thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. He said, loose thyself loose thyself from the bands about thy neck what are these bands about thy neck that he's speaking of that the Holy Spirit is speaking of the bondage of sin it says when you serve when you sin you serve sin you become a you became become a slave of sin and as we awake to righteousness as Christ arises upon our heart and we clothe ourselves to him. We circumcise our heart. We cleanse our lips. We are to loose ourselves from the bands about our neck that hold us captive, that hold us captive to sin. Loose thyself from the bands about thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For you have sold yourselves, sold into sin. For you have sold yourselves for nothing. The worthless things of this world. These temporary carnal things. For you have sold yourselves for nothing. And you shall be redeemed without price and how are we redeemed without price through the precious blood of Jesus yes Isaiah 52 leads up to verse 13 Isaiah 52 13 says behold my servant shall deal prudently he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage, his face, was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations with his blood. The kings of the earth shall shut their mouths at him. For that which hath not been told them shall they see the work of the cross. And that which they hath not heard the gospel shall they consider. This gospel of grace. By grace are you saved through faith. 
and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2. And that which they hath not heard shall they consider. Who hath believed our report, this gospel? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. See, this is what it means to be rooted in his love. This, out of this root, out of a dry ground, as Christ came to lay down his life and shed his blood. To be rooted in love is to be rooted in his mercy. And the knowing of his mercy, the power of the blood. You see, the keys of the kingdom that Jesus spoke of when in Matthew, is it Matthew 18? Where Jesus said, who, who do you say that I am or who do men say that I am? And, and Peter, by the Holy Spirit, says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says to Peter, you know, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my Holy, but my Father, which is from heaven. And he says, and thou art Peter, and on this rock, on this revelation, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What does Christ mean? It's Mashiach in the Hebrew. It means anointed one. Christ was the anointed one, and now we are the anointed ones. The, the, the anointing of Christ rests upon those that believe, who believe in his sacrifice. That anointing rests upon you. He went to the cross to release that anointing upon all humanity, that the Holy Spirit would be poured, about, poured upon all humanity, this anointing. So now it's not, the revelation is not, Jesus, you are the anointed one. We are the anointed one. This is the rock, this faith of Christ, that I am the anointed one, the son of the living God. Yes, you are. Ephesians 1 teaches us this. Blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Shake thyself off from the dust. Arise and sit down. Bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according as he has chosen us in him, in Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto sonship. It's the Greek word huiathesia. Most translation says the adoption of children, but it's the compound Greek word huiathesia. Huias is an adult son, and thesia is the placing of that son. He's predestinated us unto sonship. Thou art the Christ, the anointed one, the son of the living God. Yes, that's speaking of you. On this rock, on this revelation, will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then he says, I give to you the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What are these keys of the kingdom? These keys of the kingdom are found in the key of the house of David. The key of the house of David is twofold. It's two things coming together. It's mercy and truth coming together in, this, in the key. It's called a key, but it's, it's twofold. It's where mercy and truth meet. And I'm not going to go into the depth of that. But the keys of the kingdom are, are mercy and truth being used 
independently. Mercy is one of the keys and truth is the other key. These are the keys of the kingdom. For what is the kingdom? The kingdom, Jesus said, is in you. And who is the king? Jesus is the king. And he gives us the keys of the kingdom through his sacrifice, through his word, the truth. These are the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What binds? What legally binds? The truth. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What looses? What sets us free? The mercy, the blood of Christ. What looses other people? The blood. It sets us free from the band about thy neck. Loose thyself from the bands about thy neck. O captive daughter of Zion, for you have sold yourselves for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without price, without money, without price, through the precious blood of Christ. Loose thyself. How? By taking this key, by believing in the power of the blood. This is one of the keys of the kingdom. By abiding in his mercy. By being rooted in his love. Yes, to be rooted and grounded in love. That speaks about in Ephesians chapter 3. Is through mercy and truth. We are rooted in his love through his mercy. As he grew up as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. As we abide in his mercy. As we abide before the Father, accepted in the beloved through the blood of Christ. Yes, Ephesians goes there, again, goes there again, doesn't it? Where it says you are accepted in the beloved. Through whom you have redemption in his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Wherein he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Loose thyself. Loose thyself. Jesus said, abide in me. In John chapter 17. John chapter 15. Verse 7. Abide in me and I in you. This is the key of David. Mercy and truth coming together in the keys of the kingdom. Abide in me, in my mercy, through the blood. Where you come before the Father, accepted in the beloved, no shame, because you're clothed in him. You're clothed in the blood of Christ. And praise fills your lips, because it's nothing you have done to come before the Father, to abide before the Father, but to believe and the redemptive power of the blood of Christ. That you are accepted in the beloved, in whom you have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. If you abide in me, Jesus said, in my mercy and my words, that's the Greek word rhema, my sayings, what's that? His truth. And my sayings abide in you. This is mercy and truth. These are the keys of the kingdom. 
This is the key of David, found where mercy and truth meet together and the secret of his face. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. See, this is the keys of the kingdom. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. How did the Father love the Son? He anointed him with the Holy Spirit. How does Jesus love us? He anointed us with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it tells us that in Romans. Romans chapter 5. The love of God is poured, up, poured out upon our hearts through the Holy Spirit which was given us. The love of God was poured into our hearts. Liquid love. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments. Oh, is he now telling us? Oh, now keep the Ten Commandments. Is that what he's telling us? No. What are his commandments? Abide in me and I in you. That's the commandment he just gave us. Abide in my blood. Be rooted in my love. Let my truth abide in you. Be rooted in my love. That you might be a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Isaiah chapter 61. What did Jesus say? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, rooted in ground of love, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. This is a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. These are the keys of the kingdom. That whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Not only loosing yourself, but loosing others as you remit sin. As Jesus said in John chapter 20 to his disciples when he appeared in their midst, he said, peace unto you. As the Father has sent me, so have I sent you. What did the Father send the Son to do? Not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Through the remission of sins. Through the forgiveness of sins. And now he pours out that spirit of grace through the Holy Spirit upon us. That whosoever sins, we remit. They are remitted, Jesus said. Because that same anointing is on us. This spirit of grace. It's Christ in you. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And I walk in that same power and authority to forgive sin. Yes, the Son of Man has power to forgive sins. These are the keys of the kingdom mercy, and truth. And they meet together in the key of David. Mercy and truth is the key to the house of David. And through these keys, we abide in him, in him and us, and we ask what we will, and it is done unto us. Herein is the Father glorified that we bear much fruit, so shall we be his disciples. As the Father has loved me, Jesus said, so have I loved you. I poured out this Holy Spirit upon you. Abide 
in my love. If you keep my commandments to abide in me and I in you. As I have kept my Father's commandments. And then Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Through exercising the keys of the kingdom, abiding in him and him in you. Because where is fullness of joy? Psalm 1611 says, In his face is fullness of joy. Presence is the way it's translated in, in almost all the translations, but it's the Hebrew word panim. It's literally face. In his face is fullness of joy. Well, what goes before his face? Psalm 89 verse 14 says, Mercy and truth shall go before your face. There's fullness of joy. Abiding in him and him in you. Exercising the keys of the kingdom. That we would be transfigured into the very image of Christ and come face to face. Well, I've gone over my time, so um, I'll release more on this. Obviously, there's so much more to release, but um, shalom, shalom. Hope you all had a good night's sleep. Bless you.